Good morning to you. Joey Sparks here. This is your reminder. God's mercies are new again this morning. James chapter 1 is rich and full of so many great things. And one of those begins in verse 12 when he says, Blessed are those who, or blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. For when he stands the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. And he transitions from that into let no one say when he is tempted. What you find is that tests come in all different types of varieties, and temptation is one of those tests, no doubt. So when you find yourself tempted, whether that's tempted by a specific sin or maybe generically tempted to give up, who will we cast that temptation upon? Where does that temptation originate? Do we try to explain it away? Do we try to justify it? Or will we accept responsibility knowing knowing that accepting responsibility also gives us the opportunity to act, agency, or even control? We can control ourselves. We're responsible for ourselves. We're only responsible for ourselves. We can only control ourselves. Those seem to be almost offensive phrases today, and yet they are the key for us being effective and responsible and remaining steadfast under trial, as he would say, verse 12. So what's he say, beginning verse 13? Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. Don't lodge this temptation directly at God's feet. Why? Because God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then when that desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. When sin is fully grown, it brings forth death. You know the process. You know the process. Desire leads to temptation. Temptation leads to sin. Sin leads to death. So step back out and realize you can control your desires. You can control what you do when you're tempted. So change your desires. Don't blame God. And have a path to where you short-circuit the process of temptation. Don't allow it to give birth to sin. Then he says this, verse 16. Again, don't blame God, but instead, how how shall we view God? Verse 16. Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation of shadow due to change. You see the contrast? He's saying, don't blame God for your temptations. Don't blame him when you want to give up. Don't blame him when you're tempted by evil, by sin. Instead, remember who he is. Don't forget. Don't be deceived. Don't have blinders over your eyes. Verse 16, instead, realize that everything that is good, everything that is perfect for you in this life, is from above. And it comes down from him who does not change. Your circumstances will keep changing. Your temptations will go back and forth. Your tests will come and go. But he does not change. So don't lodge evil at his feet. Don't blame him with discouragement. And also remember, everything good comes down from him, and he does not change. Therefore, he is the one we must keep going back to, as we mentioned yesterday, asking him for wisdom, to overcome tests, to overcome temptations, and to keep changing our desires to serve him. We thank you so much for your time this good morning. It's our prayer that God's timeless word will be your meditation all day today. Look at this morning.